like tr- trans people in women's bathrooms like says who yeah. says who how do you know that's a real trans person how do you not know that's a fucking creep they don't want to pull his dick out in front of kids yes yeah. those are real we and spa you, yeah and it, if all you, that guy was a convicted uh sex offender yeah yeah and he was doing that look those guys are real it doesn't mean trans people aren't real also but those guys are fucking real yeah and to even say that those guys are real you get excommunicated you yeah. get treated like you're a nazi I never even cared about it. Didn't care at all. Yeah, I mean, I, whatever you are, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? But it's like, I can't do it anymore. I think it's engineered. I really by do. By who? By China and by Russia. Oh, no, Chinese. Yeah, I think uh, what they're doing by manipulating social media, manipulating algorithms, I think some of it is natural. Don't, don't get me wrong. I think some of it would have happened either way. It happened during the 70s with the hippie movement. There's always like... There's always these people that are, they want to live completely outside of the norm of conformity of society. And Mm. there's always people like that. But what's going on now is very different. And it's accentuated by social media. And I think it's accentuated by algorithms naturally, because people are inclined to go towards things that upset them. But also... It's, it's done purposely. And I think it's done, if you have enough stuff about like whatever the thing is, whether it's Black Lives Matter or whether it's Ukraine or whether it's Pal- free Palestine from the river to the sea, if you have enough of that online, it moves the needle. And the way I describe it the other day, it's like if two ships are going in a certain direction. This is a ship where people logically work through things. And this is a ship that's adjusted by the algorithm, affected by the algorithm. Mm. It just moves that much. Over time, this is what we're seeing. So over time, you and I, who used to be on the left, are now like, where's the left? Where are you guys? You yeah. guys are so far away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can't even see you. Yeah, yeah. You're out of your mind. You're, you're, you're fucking chopping dicks off and, and giving <laughs> little kids yeah, yeah. hormone blockers. You have no idea what the long-term consequences are. You're ignoring the health risks. You won't even talk about the health risks. Yeah. You, you use things like... G- gender affirming care. What are you saying? Yeah. What are you saying when you're talking about children? Yeah. Why are you just accepting this? Because it, it's, it's a noble thing to blurt out. So everybody goes, you're on the right team. That's what it is. Yeah. It's not like, oh my God, what are we doing to kids? It's not like, oh my God, what are we doing to San Francisco? It's not like, oh my God, why are we letting these violent criminals out of jail? It's like, yeah. oh my God, why are we defunding the fucking police? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. You can't say any of those things. If you say any of those things, but you're you a Nazi. Yeah, I you get nervous? No. Okay. I live here. Right. This is Texas. In Texas, 99% of the people agree with me. Even the left-leaning people here are way more reasonable. Even last night, there's a joke that I tell that if I say it in a liberal city, it dies. You know what I mean? And it's a, it's a joke about, you know what I mean, Down syndrome people making love. And they make up their own moves. <laughs> <laughs> right? And they, have, they know traditional right. moves. And I did it last night. It crushed both shows. And I felt like, oh, this is, you know what I mean, what I've been, I think, maybe looking for. Well, that club is specifically designed and nurtured just for what's funny. That's it. Yeah. Like, there is no message here unless you have a message and it's funny and it's in there. Yeah. You, you want to do it? That's fine. But what's valued is comedy. Just like if you go to a music show, you don't want those in between the music speeches about climate change. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up and play the song. Entertain me. We want to develop stand-up comedy, like real stand-up comedy, because I think it's a worthy art form. I think it's very valuable to people in terms of enjoyment and in terms of mental health and in terms of society. Mm. It's, in, it's, a, it's an important part of society. Like the Lakota had a person in their tribe that was called the Hayoka, and Hayoka was the sacred clown. And that this is the person that made fun of everything. Because if you couldn't make fun of something, it was bullshit. Like if there's one guy, oh, you can't make fun of him. Well, that's probably bullshit. He probably has a, 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 an a disappropriate amount or an inappropriate amount of power. Yeah. A disproportionate amount of influence. There's like probably some ego going on here too if you can't mon- make fun of something. Yeah. Because if you can make fun of something and it's not funny, then you're not funny. But if you can make fun of something and it's funny and people laugh and someone gets mad, they're the problem. Yeah. They're the problem. And I want to say something. I never said this before. I want to say it now, right? Is I, just for my personal life, some of the bullying that I received was necessary for me to get to where I am now. 
Well, you don't want it. I don't want it. No, I didn't ever I want it. Saying. But I, I wouldn't like go back in my past and change anything. Right. I right. wouldn't either. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like everything. Like my dad was fucking violent as fuck, dude. Like he would knock my mom's tooth out. She has a missing tooth right here. You know what I mean? And we witnessed all this trauma. <sighs> yeah. Right. And he was like, dude. It was like, it was fucking terrible. I have done EMDR on just him. Trauma therapy, mm. right? And it's like, and then you know, I went, you know, I was a little guy in in an American high school, and people would bully me. I lived in Minnesota. They, would, they thought I was an Eskimo. They threw ice chunks at my head. Crows would. I, anyway, my point is, is that all those little things, and even in comedy, it was hard being me, this little guy. You know what I mean? Doing it, people, your know, comics would, black comics would sometimes come up to me. Asians aren't funny. You know what I mean? Well, there was always that knock on Asians. Yeah. Let's be honest. Like, Henry Cho was, like, the first guy that went mainstream. I love him. He was the first guy that went mainstream. I love him. Wasn't he? Yes. Ronnie Chang's fucking hilarious. I love Ronnie. That dude is so, so good. So funny. He's so funny. And he's got so much attitude on stage. Johnny Yoon was before him. That's right. Johnny Yoon. He's funny, too. Yeah, he's very funny. There's there, But there was a knock, you know? But, dude, nobody thought that when they saw you on stage. Like you're you're a really funny guy. You're very good. Thank you. Thank you. Very good comic. <laughs> thank, thank you. You're a very good comic. Yeah. And I, I also want to tell you the reason why I didn't want to do this now is because I'm doing a special and I want to promote it. Okay. And I thought maybe I could only do it once every five years, but then your people said that I could do it when I. You could do this anytime you want. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah I, I feel. Me. I feel that now. You have my number. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna text, text you. I'm gonna text you. I'm gonna do it. Anytime gonna do you want to. I love gonna, you. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be great. Listen. I yeah, love yeah. you. I'm happy I love you too. <laughs> yeah, I get it. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it now. I know now how it works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, I was like, um, I have to do one. I have to do a special. And the reason you really being, should, because it'll also force you to write more and fuck around more. And, but you need a place to do that, and that's why you should move here. Well, that's why I'm going to. so much stage time here, dude. That's why in March, I talked to Adam. I go, I'm going to do shows here in the little room let's to do go. Bobby Lee new joke night. Let's go, Bobby Lee. Yeah. Let's go. And then me and Adam are going to do a um, Star Trek podcast. Oh, boy. Yeah. And at that point, you're going to watch the inner light. <sighs> that's a big <laughs> ask. A lot of asking. It's 40 me. minutes. <clears throat> you really think that's the best science fiction ever? Better than Alien, the first Alien movie with Sigourney Weaver? But you have to think, though, that it, the, the, you know, because obviously the budget is an alien budget, right? So it's cheesy television, right? But it, the concept, you know what I mean, was mind blowing at the time. When I saw that in my early 20s, it blew my fucking mind. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I don't want to give it away now, you know what I mean? Maybe I could, can I try to sell it to you real quick or no? No. 